Hello there and welcome to The Meaningful Stitch. This is episode 13. I am Amy Palco and I'm coming to you from Edinburgh, Scotland. And this is my digital home from home, a place where I get to share with you my knitting practice and my knitting projects. But before we get to the knitting, I'd like to share with you a card that I drew for us from the Animal Spirit Oracle Deck by the artist and author Kim Kranz. So, the card that I drew for us is this beautiful one here, which is Whale. And I'll just read for you the words from the guide. Whale. Desire to delve deeper. Profound peace. Ancient wisdom. The whale represents profound emotional health and stability. Whale personalities are not afraid of emotional expression or traversing difficult terrain as they have overcome many challenges in their lives. These experiences have enriched them, given them stability, strength and a depth that is rare. Whale energy is usually linked to the feminine forces of compassion and communication. We can depend on whale personalities when all else seems lost and trust them to be a beacon in our darkest hour. When in balance, calm, steady, deeply compassionate. When out of balance, heavy slips into old story to bring into balance regular self-care. I love that we got whale for today not least because we are entering into the time of the Libra full moon. And Libra is really the peacekeeper of the whole zodiac. It's the one that helps us to resolve conflicts, perfect our partnerships, move into right relationship, and to be able to find harmony both within and without. And so I think whale stepping in right at this particular point in time is absolutely perfect for us. And it really made me think about, you know, where do I find peace and harmony in my own life? And of course, it's in my knitting. <laughs> so let me share some of that with you now. I am wearing the Pearl Break by Stephen West. However, it's quite heavily modified. So I'll talk you through some of that in a second. But first of all, I'll just tell you about the yarn because it's so beautiful. The yarn is Drops Brushed Alpaca in Pale Rust and then this is Delicate Merino by Walk Collection and it's in the colourway Koi and if you can see it's got these delicate peaches, these bright pops of corally orange and then we have some of these darker shades, some turquoise, some golds, some olives. It's a really beautiful shade and you get 600 meters to 100 grams, which means that it goes a long way. One skein goes a long way. So, and here we get to my modification. <laughs> but first of all, this part is the pearl break. We have this section of garter stitch, and then we move into these stripes with this slipped stitch creating these segments. This part at the bottom here <laughs> is my own modification. And that's because while I was knitting this, I decided that I really wanted to do some brioche. I find brioche knitting to be very relaxing, very meditative. It really brings me back to my center. And so I decided that I wanted to add that into this particular knit because I knit this around about this time last year. So just as we were moving into the first lockdown, COVID was first becoming a very real threat in ways that we hadn't perhaps perceived before. And so life became very unsettling and unnerving and uncertain. And I think it's at times like that that our knitting can really come into its own. But we need to be able to listen to our hearts and decide, you know, what, what's my heart calling for? And in this instance, my heart was calling for brioche. So I added this brioche section at the bottom here with these large eyelets, as you'll see, and with an I-cord edging. You can see some of the colours in Koi there. Aren't they beautiful? Okay. So, how did I do the modification? Well, I was influenced by two other shawls. And one I shared with you the other week there, which is the point shawl. 
And again, this is actually another delicate merino by Walk Collection. I think it was called Boho Boho Blush? No, that's something else. Something Bohemian. <laughs> So, and it was a lovely creamy shade, and again, it's got these sort of rust sections, little pops of pink, and this kind of creamy yellow. It's beautiful. But before you get to the brioche section, we have this section here, which has these slip stitches, which then enters into these large eyelets, which then start the basis of your brioche pattern. This is The Point by Julie Dubrow, Julie Knits in Paris. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later on because it relates to another one of my knits. So I was influenced by that because I was looking at these slip stitch sections and I thought, well, I, when the slip stitch section ends, I can create one of those big eyelets and start my brioche. So that's what I did. And you'll see that the first set of brioche increases occurs just at the end of that slip stitch section. And then I remembered uh, another shawl that I had knitted by Stephen West, and this one is Seriously Holy, and I think you've probably seen this one before. And I really loved the way in which he increased um, it with his, oh dear, I've absolutely blown myself out there. <laughs> Um, the way in which he managed his increases with the brioche. So you'll see that there's one here, there's one back here, and they were staggered throughout the shawl. And so I decided that I would like to do that too in this particular part here. So you can see I've got one here, and then one a little bit further on, and then coming back to centre later on. So I'm really just using other patterns for inspiration and influence and I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> and I think that's one of the wonderful things actually about knitting. Once you're once you're familiar with it, once you've knitted lots of patterns, you can really start to explore a bit more of a mix and match <laughs> a, a process to your own self-expression. So this is the pearl break, the modified pearl break with a garter, with a, sorry, with a brioche border. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. It's very lovely, very soft, very cozy, and very comforting. And that was exactly what I was looking for from this particular project. So that's the shawl. You've already had a little peek at what's underneath, which is this jumper, which is my white horse by Caitlin Hunter. I'll stand up so you can see it a little bit better. It's got this gorgeous lace yoke with these bobbles. And I've knitted it with quite a lot of uh, positive ease and cropped it. So, and it's, I think it sits really nicely on the body. And uh, it is knitted in Fonte Bohem. I've got the shade number here, 397. <laughs> it's always slightly trickier when they don't give them actual names and just give them numbers, but there we go. And it's a linen cotton mix. So this is a jumper that I like to wear a lot during the springtime and on, in the summertime in the evenings if I just need to throw something on over the top or if I'm being blasted by air conditioning. So um, I love this jumper and I've actually, this was the second one that I had knitted. You know how some people say that they would quite like to knit a second one or make a second one of something they've already made? And then I think most times people very rarely do. I'm one of those people that actually makes the second one. So, so this is my second one. My other one was uh, kind of a light red shade and it was done in Rowan Creative Linen. And I'll probably share that with you a bit later on in the springtime or in the summer. I expect I'll wear that for one of our future episodes, so you'll see it then. But this is my second one, and it is beautiful. I love these uh, segments, and one of, the, one of the tips that I would give you for them is to ensure that you're using your markers to really mark your lace repeats, just to keep you on track. That said, 
I made a horrible error in one of my lace repeats. And so I had to do quite severe lace surgery, which meant having to drop about 14 stitches back several rows and then knitting them all back up again. Otherwise I would have had to have ripped back a lot of knitting. And I think that was the first time that I'd really attempted that kind of drastic lace surgery <laughs> on my knitting. And I was really encouraged actually to do it by uh, Julie Dubrow, who um, designed the point shawl because I went to a brioche, fixing brioche mistakes class with her and she really talked us through and held our hand while we dropped lots of stitches down and, and learned how to knit them back up in brioche. And so then I just took that concept and, did, and brought it into the, the lace knitting when I discovered I'd made a catastrophic error. So, <laughs> and, it, and it worked out fine. I can't, in fact, I was looking to try and find where the error was so that I could show you, but it's uh, absolutely, well, I can't find it. So that's a good thing. <laughs> so that's what I'm wearing. But what have I finished? Well, my only finished object this week is this. And it's the Maritimo Tea, again by Caitlin Hunter. Again with a lovely lace stitch. Very pretty. This is knitted in vivacious four ply. The main colour is called Verdigris and the contrast colour is called Peach Bellini. And this secondary contrast colour here is a little mini skein that I had left over from a gradient from a couple of years back now. Um, and it was, there you go, you can see there. And it was this beautiful blue gradient, but there was two skeins that were really very, very close in colour. And so I only used one and didn't use the other. So I had one left over. And it's by Tall Yarns, and the brand name I think is Soliloquy, and it's a merino silk. So it's a little bit different because this is just merino, but the secondary contrast colour here is merino silk, which made it a little slippery to work with, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so I knitted the large size, but when I did the measurements, I realised that uh, because Caitlin Hunter's patterns, for some reason, don't seem to give enough sleeve circumference, certainly for me anyway, um, I decided that I was going to knit this in large but I wanted to do the extra large for the sleeve circumference. So to do that I followed the instructions for the large size up to here and then as I knitted up here I knitted the length that it said for the extra large. I followed, continued to follow all the stitch numbers for the large size but I did the extra large for the measurement for this part here. And so then when I picked up my stitches and knitted my sleeve I did that according to the extra large and that was just a really simple way to modify the size so that it fits me beautifully. It does have a, a large degree of positive ease in the body. I would not have wanted to have gone any larger than that. Uh, or any more positive ease. That was just right for me, but I really did need to go up in the sleeve just to make sure that, that was comfortable. I did not do this with my tenure, so this is a learned mistake. <laughs> well, not learned mistake, I'm learning from my mistakes. <laughs> I, I knitted the tenure in blacker Leoness four ply, which again is a, a linen mix, it's a wool linen mix, that one. And I knitted, I think I knitted the large size and knitted the, the sleeves as it was specified in the pattern. And they are, they fit, but they're a little bit on the uncomfortable side. I really wish that I had done what I've done with this one. So if you are looking at doing a pattern and you find that the body is the right amount of ease or the right size, but the sleeves are going to be a little tight, then that's a really easy way to modify the size and move between the, the two. So just to make sure that you get something which fits well and, uh, and which feels comfortable. I also used my stitch markers for the, for the lace, which made things super easy and which meant that I could then knit my lace while I watched Netflix, which is always good, or in the evening when you're tired, you, see, you don't have to pay too much attention to it, which is good. And the other thing to say is that I did helical knitting and I 
alternate, al alternated, <laughs> alternated my skeins. I put oh, for the main color, not for the contrast color, just for the main. And that was really because I didn't want to create any kind of large pooling of color. I wanted a more uh, overall color effect, which you can see there. And I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. I love the colors, the way the colors are working together. It makes me think of like a tidal pool. You know, you see sort of those those browns and those teals and those greens. And then you have these kind of these little sea creatures and they kind of have this like bright pop of orange. And then we have the water, the deeper water turning beautiful shades of blue. So I'm really, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's such a wearable. I can't tell you how many times I've worn this already. It is very easy to, to wear. It goes with black, it goes with denim, both of which I wear extensively. <laughs> I have worn short sleeved uh, tops underneath it. I've worn it by itself. I've worn it over a dress. I've worn it over a long sleeve t-shirt. So it's a very easy piece to wear. And I'm gonna talk a little bit later on about what it's inspired because I don't think this is going to be my last Maritimo, just like my white horse was not my last white horse. <laughs> so that's my only finished object, but I have a few works in progress and one of which you have already seen, but I will start with that one first, I think, just to give you uh, a progress report. <laughs> but this is the Corella. Now, the Corella is a wrap that has been designed by Julie Dubrow, who did the point shawl that I showed you just before, and it's from the same collection of hers called the Ballet Collection. So when I saw the Corella, I mean, I so enjoyed knitting the point shawl, but when I saw the Corella and I could see the, the echoes or the similarities or the theme, I suppose, following through one pattern into the next, I knew that I really wanted to, to knit this one. So it is a modular knit, and you start off by knitting this very long rectangle. So it's almost like a big long scarf. And your repeat here is these nine, uh, nine sections of, nine repeats of this uh, rusty color, which is Drops Kid Silk and Malabrigo, uh, Malabrigo lace. It's merino, single ply, and this is in cognac. So we have that section there, and then we move into the three repeats of our contrast color, which for me is this one here. Again, it's Malabrigo lace, and it's in apricot. So I am so loving the way in which this is knitting up. And although it looks complicated, you're actually only doing uh, lace stitches on, on, slip, on one row. The rest of the rows are all garter and slip stitches. So it's actually a lot easier than you might think. And I'm almost at the end of this long rectangle section. So, there you go. <laughs> So I have a few more repeats of these to do and then all my stitches get put onto a piece of waste yarn and then I pick up the stitches along the edge to knit a brioche panel and then I pick up stitches again all the way around the wrap uh, to do an eyelet border. So it's such an interesting construction and it's beautifully working up and just very easy to follow as well. Very easy to follow Julie's patterns. She writes them very well. So I'm using, as you can see, my uh, Chao Gu needles. And these, I think, are 3.75s, are they? No, they're fours, four millimeters. I love the Chao Gu's because of this red lace and they, they don't have memory. So you know how sometimes you can get your your cables get all sort of spooled in on themselves and then they they hold that memory and so every time you try and use it um, it all folds in on itself but with the stainless steel core in the red laces of the Chaigu needles it holds a very stable 
uh, shape for you, which is excellent. And it's living inside my cocoon tree bag. So this is from the Noel Noel collection from Christmas time. And it has this lovely, lovely red tassels. Oh, and there's her label, you can see. I'll pop all the details for all of these knits as well as the link to Cocoon Tree in my description box, which is just below. So if there's anything that you want to find, the show notes are pretty extensive. I do take my time over them and try and link to everything that I think you'd be interested in. And, uh, and I am now trying to do Ravelry projects for most of my projects. And so uh, I'm not sure if it's completely up to date at the moment, but, <laughs> but I do try. <laughs> So I've got links to those as well. Okay, next project is also one that you know about but that you haven't seen anything knitted on yet. And this is because it's my new half and half triangles wrap as part of the Caddy Jacks Knits Half Wrap Cal. And I received the most fabulous linen quill yarn in bright flamingo and turmeric yellow and I shared quite extensively about why I love this bright flamingo particularly last time and so I decided on the spring equinox which is a time for new beginnings it's when we start to feel our energy begin to pick up because it's the coming of the spring the moving of once from one season into the next that would be a perfect time to cast on so I did and I cast on in the bright flamingo. That's a pretty authentic colour, I think. Isn't that a truly fantastic colour? I adore it. I love it with this pale green. I love it with the bright yellow. I love it with a really kind of khaki green as well. It looks fantastic with black and with dark wood. I've got some dark wood earrings that I, and bangles that I like to wear with this colour too. Uh, it's just a fabulous colour. For summer and like I said before I know that knitting a very large shawl might seem a bit strange for anybody who's not from Scotland to be knitting for the summer time <laughs> but trust me it will get somewhere so it's all good. My stitch marker here is one that I got uh, for Christmas along with some beautiful rainbow mini skeins from Fearless Yarns and this is my little Scottish thistle here so we have a Scottish flamingo. Excellent. <laughs> so I'm so enjoying knitting on this. It's so easy. It's so comforting. This is absolutely where you can find peace and ease and centering, centering ourselves. I love to knit this whilst I'm watching things on the television or I love to just sit and knit on it in silence, but I can also sit and read and knit at the same time because I bring my book up onto my iPad on my Kindle app and so to change uh, from one page to the next I just have to swipe and I can do that whilst I'm whilst I'm knitting so that I had forgotten that that was something I could do with this project <laughs> so that's lovely I'm enjoying that very much <laughs> So that's also living in a cocoon tree bag. This was the Tree of Life bag, which I know is no longer available, but it's also got the, the Scottish thistle. So there you go, we've got, we've got a thistle theme going on <laughs> for this project anyway. So that's my second work in progress. My third work in progress, and this is one that you haven't seen yet. And again, sorry, it's in another cocoon tree bag. This is the peacock one. And you got a little glimpse of the pattern of the, the project there too, I think. <laughs> so I have really enjoyed knitting Andrea Murray patterns. And so when she brought out stripes, I was looking at it and I was thinking, I think that might be that might be a future knit. Well, it is. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Here it is. Here's what I've got so far. It's knitting up super quick. This is, I'm recording this on Saturday. I cast this on on Thursday. So the yoke is complete and I've started to work on the body now. 
Now my yarn, well my yarn is very special yarn actually. So I don't know if I've mentioned before, but at Christmas time, my mum and I like to make a yarn advent calendar for one another. And last year we both decided that we were going to choose an image and I'll pop a, a picture of the, the image that I chose. And then we decided on particular colors that we were going to choose that were inspired by that particular image for the yarn that we would give one another for that advent. And so my image had a lot of peaches, a lot of beautiful greens. It was, a, oh, uh, you can see, I think, it's, I think it's a beautiful image and I got lots and lots of beautiful yarn that was inspired by it. And these are some of the yarns. So let me show you. I got some mini skeins and I've caked up all the mini skeins, but you can see them here. That's like one there and that's another one. And these are John Arban's Knit by Numbers in the four ply. So for 25 grams, it's 100 meters, which is very substantial, I think, for the, for the mini skeins. And it means that I, well, I have six of this shade, which is the orange, and six of this shade, which is the olive. And so they start very, very light and they move through and become progressively darker. So I think maybe that's the most dark one. And there you go, there's the most light one together, just to, just to show you. So I decided that I wanted to move my stripes from light to dark through the jumper. And I'm interspersing it using another John Arbin yarn. And this is Exmoor Sock. And it is in the colorway Mizzle, which is this kind of silvery gray. So this is how it's looking. Oh, there we go. So we have the mizzle, and then we have the lightest of the knit by numbers in orange and olive, and then another stripe of mizzle, and then in the next uh, shade of dark, shade darker, and now we're moving into the next two, which are darker still, and I'm just doing a stripe of mizzle. So I'm really pleased with it. Like I said, it's knitting up very quickly. It's such a lovely knit. The yarn, oh, this yarn is so soft and so lovely. And the colors are, I mean, you should just, I will put the link, as I said, in the description box, but you should go and have a look at the different colors that they do. They've just brought out two new colors, I think, which are raspberry and navy blue and, or, or is it indigo, maybe? But they're just exquisite. They're so lovely, and it's such an easy way to put together a palette. Now, I'm gonna have yarn left over because, as I just showed you, that's my lightest one here, which went at the very top here. And that's how much I've got left, which is probably maybe over half, certainly. And so what I was thinking I might do, once I have completed the jumper completely, is that I'm going to take my leftovers, let me see if I can find like this, and then I'm going to start, let me see this, how pretty is this? I'm gonna try and, <laughs> we'll see if I manage to put them together without things falling off. Um, here's the next one. And then this one, and then this one. You see? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to spit splice them together and wind them so that I end up with a gradient of all the, all the leftovers that I have. And then I'm going to do the same for the green. And then I'm going to try and think up a project that will, that will do those justice. So I really don't want to lose any of this particular yarn because it is so stunning and it is so beautiful that um, that I really want to use every single scrap of it. So that's my plan uh, but in the meantime I'm just going to keep on knitting these stripes. What is it about stripes that make you just want to keep knitting? There's something about wanting to get to the next stripe. <laughs> 
maybe this is why people get into stripey socks because you just want to keep getting to the next stripe quite possibly so I will have this finished I think in the next week this is going super fast as I say I'm onto the body already the sleeves are three quarter length sleeves I think so this is really not taking me very long to do at all. So I will probably have this finished to show you next time. So I shall pop it back into the safety of its beautiful bag. Okay, so gosh, well that's all of the works in progress. Let me see what I'm planning. Well, I do have quite a lot of things planned. <laughs> I've been looking at summer teas. And I'm really, I know that some people don't like to knit through summer and I get that. And particularly I think when it gets very warm, sometimes the yarn doesn't feel so nice in your hands. And I think sometimes that's when particular yarns like silk or bamboo or linen or cotton uh, can be really lovely to knit with as alternatives to, to the more woolly or alpaca yarns. But for me, I knit all year round, so I do like to have a couple of summer tops. And so I've been looking at Tannis from Tannis Fibre Arts Design, the Rocket Tee. And I really like this one because it uses one skein of mohair with one skein of fingering weight for the, for the, um, for the smaller sizes. So I was, I'm kind of on the border between not quite fitting that and, and needing the next, needing the, needing a little more of the fingering weight. So I was looking to see, um, did I have anything that I could use for those for that particular tee? And I found one option, but it uses, instead of a fingering weight, it uses this lace weight. And I don't know if you can see, it's this very rich shade of purple and it's called aubergine is Lithuanian linen and I got it from Midwinter Yarns which is a wonderful yarn stockist here in Scotland and I think I got it from Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I really have been waiting well that's a good shot of the colour I really have been waiting for the perfect project for it so I was thinking that I could match it up with this, which is La Leading Lady Lace by Ginger Twist Studio. And it's her mohair silk base. It's 72% mohair, 28% silk, and it's 420 meters for 50 grams. Now, look when I put these two together. I think that would make a really beautiful rocket tee. And this is slightly more, and actually I have two skeins of this, so I have plenty of it, but I think I can get away with using that instead of the fingering weight. So I'll need to knit up a swatch and see how it looks. I might need to play around with the gauge and my needles and decide exactly what size to knit. But I have enough, I think, to do a beautiful tea in that. And I have another option for the rocket tea, but it comes with a spoiler warning. So, if you have ordered the Ching Fiber Club for the spring summer 2021, and you have not received your skein yet and you would like it to remain a secret or a mystery until you receive it in the post, then you might want to stop watching for just now. And I will tell you in the, on the screen here when you can tune back in when it's safe so that it can remain a mystery for you too because I know that I would have been upset <laughs> if my mystery had been spoiled before before it had arrived to me. And I know that because I'm in the UK and Ching Fibre's in the UK, I'm probably receiving it earlier than people who are ordering from outside of the UK. So, all that said, this is a spoiler. <laughs> I am going to show the first skein of the signature theme from the Ching Fibre Club 
for spring summer 2021 and if you do not want to see that then fast forward to this particular timestamp. Okay I'm going to take a sip of water while you do that. <laughs> so I will start by showing you the colour that I found in my stash which I'm thinking of using for the Rocket Tea which is this and it's like a very very pale lilac very pale lilac almost like a pearlescent grey really and I think it will be perfect to go with this particular skein of mohair so again this is a spoiler <laughs> I'm giving you lots of opportunities here but here it is this is from the signature theme for the Qing Fibre Club and is that not just so perfect together? This is the thing, I was looking at various different yarn shops, various different yarn dyers, looking to see whether I could find a yarn that I thought would be a lovely match for this mohair and then realised that maybe I should just go through my stash. I have a large stash so um, I, I, I was, it was not that hard to find something beautiful that, that matched but there we go, I'll just show you this in, in close-up detail it's like a sea glass green and it has these sections of lilac and then kind of this black speckle and then this neon yellow speckle I'll open it up so you can see it better I, it's quite unusual. I don't think I've ever seen a mohair quite like it before and it absolutely does scream to me Ching fibre. It absolutely does seem like a, a signature. So I'm going to put that away now. I'm going to not show it again so that we can bring other people back on in case anybody was not watching it because they wanted it to stay a mystery. I'm going to put that away. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> But I was going to talk a little bit about my stash because I have a large stash. I don't have a huge stash, but I have a substantial stash. I, um, I've been given yarns. I buy yarns on sale. I buy yarns when I'm at yarn festivals. Uh, last year I bought yarn from the iNet7 collective when they were doing events to make sure that I was supporting local yarn stores through the, the closures because of the pandemic. I've inherited yarn. <laughs> I have got yarn on create on craft D stashes, etc. etc. So um, I do have a large variety of yarn at my fingertips, literally. So when I was thinking, you know, that I would like to try and find a yarn that matched that particular mohair, it really was a, a exciting thing actually to dive into my stash and to go through and pull out different options and to explore what, what I could do and what might be fun and I think I had about four or five different options of, of different ways that I could go with it and some were more um, contrasting, some were um, the, like the one that I've chosen is much more complementary but uh, every single one that I, that I pulled out was, was one that I could have worked with and I think there's something very thrilling about having that. And I wouldn't say either that certainly the, the Ching Fibre uh, Club yarn was a, a much more expensive yarn than I sometimes go for. I tend to choose um, quite a lot of uh, commercial yarns that are easily accessible and have a lower price point. And this is because I knit a lot. So if I was to buy uh, hand dyed yarn all the time, then I wouldn't be able to knit as often as I do. And so again, you know, if I'm going to be practicing finding peace and coming into a place of well-being, for me, that's very caught up in the actual action of the knitting and also working with beautiful yarns, you know, and, and certainly I do think that, that my stash is full of, of beautiful yarns. Well, I think so anyway. <laughs> Another one of those uh, workhorse yarns, so to speak, is drops. And I know that I've mentioned drops already, but I did get some drops in the post just this week. And I got a sweater quantity of this. And it's Drops Lima. 
I think this is two pound twenty a ball. So again, it's it's not um, it's not going to break the bank. It's DK weight, and it's a hundred meters per fifty grams. And this is in their navy blue color. And I got it because I wanted to match it with some yarn that my mum has sent me, which I've shared on the podcast before, which is this. And this is Kremke Soul Wool. And this is In The Mood. And the colourway is Cheerfulness. Yes, Cheerfulness. <laughs> so I've decided that I would like to knit the Spark Cardigan by Andrea Murray. And it uses spin cycle. This is a, so I suppose, a more commercial uh, alternative, but it's a similar weight. And so I think it'll be perfect. But the variety from one skein to the next is really pretty stark. So I'm going to have to be quite careful in how I order the, the yarn that I'm working with there. And that reminded me that I had some more drops yarn in my stash and I had a sweater quantity of this and I bought this when it was on sale so it was even less pricey pricey stuff not pricey at all I think it was one pound eighty or something a ball and this is 200 meters is it no 170 meters per 50 grams again I don't know if you're seeing it's again it's like a dark blue a dark navy and I found some navy blue mohair for sale at Ginger Twist. Gosh, must be two years ago now. It's a fingering weight mohair, so it's not as delicate as, say, for example, the, let me try and get a strand of this, the, the drops. You see how slender that is compared with this. So it's a slightly thicker weight and what I'm thinking I'd like to do is to knit myself a Maritimo, another one, but this time for the lace section I want to use this mohair. So instead of contrasting it with colour, I want to contrast it with texture and I think that will be really interesting. The other thing that I want to do is the Maritimo, let me go and find it again, the Maritimo has two uh, two lace sections and I want to do three lace sections in this one with the the drops nord and the mohair so I think it will be a similar length of body which I think I did 12 inches in the body and I'm not going to put lace on the sleeve which is how the pattern is written and I'm going to modify the sleeves so that they taper possibly down to three quarter length. So a few modifications on it but I think it could be really interesting and as I'm knitting my stripes on as much as I'm loving my stripes on and want to get to the next stripe and the next stripe and the next stripe I do find that I am thinking more and more about this Maritimo with the mohair. A mohair Maritimo. <laughs> So that's the spark cardigan, that's the mohair maritimo, that's my rocket tees, which brings me up to where I'm finding peace. So a few of the places that I'm finding peace just now is I started watching Anne with an E. And I know this is not a new series, I know most people have probably watched this already. <laughs> But Anne with an E is on Netflix and it's their adaptation of Ellen Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. I love Anne of Green Gables. Uh, it's, a, it's a book that's incredibly special to me. I remember the older version of, uh, the older adaptation of it and that was, that was really lovely and I really enjoyed that one when I was little. And I also remember reading my daughter Anne of Green Gables and getting up to a certain passage, which I'm not looking forward to getting up to in this <laughs> in this season, in this series, um, that, that made me cry horrendously while I was trying to read her a bedtime story, which was not terribly soothing. 
<laughs> However, she's she seems to have grown up relatively unscathed from that episode. <laughs> but um, but I do I love that book. It means so much to me, and so because it meant so much, you know, when you really invest in something, it becomes almost too precious, and you don't want to go there in case it in case it doesn't quite live up to your expectations or it doesn't quite meet you in the way that you had hoped to have been met. So I finally got over myself and I watched it. <laughs> so I watched the first episode anyway and I just loved it. And in fact, when the credits started, I started to cry. And I know I am a crier, so I, I, get, I get weepy very easily, but I, I did and it was just, it was like, like finding a new favourite right from the very beginning and so I'm, I'm loving that and so that's that's one of the things that's bringing me peace and joy and centering. The other thing that my husband and I started watching and you might not think this is terribly appropriate for finding peace but it's called The Expanse. <laughs> Again it's not a new season, a new series at all. I think they've just finished series season five and season six is coming out later this year. Uh, we have finished season one and it's a sci-fi season series and it's set in I think it's 2300 and there are people on Mars, there's people on Earth and there's people in the asteroid belt and it starts off almost like a cold war and so there's lots of battle scenes and tension and thrillers and all that kind of stuff which none of it sounds very peaceful and it's not uh, but I think there's something really important actually about sci-fi and the way in, in which it can represent conflict and that allows us to be able to n navigate it better in our own lives if we bring our sense of awareness to that and are able to use the narratives that we're engaging in as a tool for finding uh, ways in which we can better approach our own lives. It gives us better perspective possibly because it's set so far away and in so so far forward in time. So it, we're not quite as closely connected to it. We're not um, we're not so myopic. We get we get to create a, a critical perspective. And I think that's one of the things that the expanse does does really well. So I'm enjoying that. I also saw that Masterclass, which I mention I think every time I do a podcast these days, but <laughs> Masterclass has got two new masterclasses on it and one is John Kabat-Zinn who's got a masterclass on mindfulness and meditation and then there's a brand new one that just came out this week by Donna Fari who's um, masterclasses on yoga. So I haven't watched either of those but I'm really excited about them and I'm going to be diving into those. I did just complete watching the Bobby Brown uh, masterclass on makeup which was interesting and engaging and she's a very warm and natural teacher so that was that was lovely too but I am looking forward to diving into this this yoga and meditation and I saw a beautiful video a couple of days ago was it yesterday day before all my days are blending so it was very difficult to tell one from the other <laughs> but I watched one by a vlogger called, a podcaster called Franklin Habit, and he has restored a old Singer sewing machine and he has created the most exquisite video to accompany it so you can really kind of follow the process of the, of the bringing it back to life and so I'm going to leave a, a link to that in the discussion box, or the description box below because I think you'll really enjoy it. It's very calming. It's about 14 minutes long, so it's not super long, but it is long enough that you can properly immerse yourself in it and explore this um, this process of caring for something um, material that holds value and has history and is invested with story and you know making sure that it's going to be preserved moving forward. So I think you might like that too. And I have one last thing to share with you, which is a Spotify playlist, which is called The Moon is Calling. So I'm going to leave a link for that in the description box too, because you might like that one 
also it's got some lovely peaceful soothing songs and I thought that would be a perfect way in which to see through this this Libra full moon. And on that note that brings me to the blessing at the end of our podcast and I'm going to use one from John O'Donoghue's Benedictus. Now I don't know about you but when I find something that in a book that I hadn't seen before I always find that I've discovered it at exactly the right point. So I was thinking about this card that I had drawn about whale, about profound peacefulness. I was thinking about this Libra full moon, Libra the peacekeeper and I was looking through the contents page of this particular book and you'll see that there are different segments so there's beginnings there's desires then we've got thresholds become ho, sorry thresholds homecomings states of heart callings beyond endings and then it's got a section which is more written in prose which is to retrieve the lost art of blessing and then I noticed something that I'd never seen before which was at the very very end there's an epilogue and it says for peace so I wanted to share that one with you for today so for peace on a Libra full moon as the fever of day comes towards twilight may all that is strained in us come to ease we pray for all those who suffered violence today. May an unexpected serenity surprise them. For those who risk their lives each day for peace, may their hearts glimpse providence at the heart of history. That those who make riches from violence and war might hear in their dreams the cries of the lost. That we might see through fear of each other a new vision to heal our fatal attraction to aggression. That those who enjoy the privilege of peace might not forget their tormented brothers and sisters. That the wolf might lie down with the lamb, that our swords be beaten into plowshares, and no hurt or harm be done anywhere along the holy mountain. Here we go, my loves. I'm wishing you peace in your knitting, in your life, in your day, and I'm wishing you full moon blessings as well for, for our Libra full moon throughout the next day hour or so. So sending you all much love and I will speak to you again really soon.